Hi, I'm Giri Prakash from The Federal and uh, in this episode of Big Money, we are going to talk about what's the best time to invest for an individual. There are uh, people who uh, start investing very early in their uh, lives and we have seen people who have actually started investing when they are teenagers. And uh, we also seen people who uh, invest uh, in their 20s. Uh, and but but then uh, this this episode is more about uh, what could happen to you if uh, you invest too early or too late, and therefore what's the best time to do it. So let us begin by saying that uh, that is a popular saying that timing is everything, and when it comes to pursuing wealth generation, this couldn't be more accurate. While your twenties and even earlier maybe a time of willingness to take risks, it's often accompanied by a lack of experience and a limited network. And also, uh, you're not too sure uh, what's the kind of money that, that you need to invest. So you might actually invest in far less or far more. So if you look at, on the other hand, if you look at, say, maybe during your 40s, it may bring you more resources and a larger uh, network but there are additional responsibilities which are intangible in nature and therefore it becomes much more challenging for you to embrace the risk of equity. So what's the best, uh, which are the best years for you to invest? So we uh, found out through our uh, data survey that uh, perhaps the best time to start investing and accumulating and generating wealth for yourself is uh, that you should do it during your 30s. And therefore, the 30s is a bit of a sweet spot. With a combination of valuable uh, experience, a growing network, and a willingness to take risks, pursuing equity opportunities during this decade can significantly increase your chances of success. Now, let us look at assessing the risks and uh, rewards, which we talked about earlier. Before delving into the potential benefits, it's uh, crucial to acknowledge the risks associated with working for equity. Investing your time and talent in a failing company can result in lost opportunities. We are, <clears throat> we are talking about an individual company, but it's important for you to realize that what your portfolio should consist of. You can actually go to a financial planner and who could invest on your behalf, or you could do it on your own. You could pick, uh, pick up company stocks and, uh, and invest. But, therefore, but then you re really need to know um, which are the right company stocks, whether I should go for a mutual fund or whether I should go and pick up equity of companies and then whether I should actually, instead of uh, uh, keep investing in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a company stock, should I buy and sell at a regular interval that takes a lot of your time. time. And believe me, it's, it's, it's not that easy. You have to dedicate a certain amount of time on a regular basis, actually on a daily basis. Do you have the time for that? That's very, very important. <clears throat> now, there is also the danger of missing out. One critical risk to consider is the danger of missing out on the upside. If you rely solely on your salary, you won't be able to participate in the uh, uh, in wealth generation because you really need a second income. And it is the realization that should come to you uh, very early in your career because of the fact that Today, nothing is certain. Uh, there are uh, no longer uh, safe government jobs that you can look at. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, because the jobs are dim diminishing in the, in the government sector, so the private sector is the only option for you, or rather the better option for you because of the fact that uh, whatever skills gets that you bring to the table, it gets re rewarded uh, to, a, to a great extent compared with uh, the so-called secure government jobs. Uh, so it's very important that you don't miss out on all these things. While your salary remains stagnant, and this can happen to a whole lot of people, um, having a second income through this mode of generation of wealth actually helps you uh, to, uh, for example, allow you to buy a house, a better house, a bigger house, and uh, and at the same time, uh, um, allows you to do a lot of other things. Uh, for example, um, 
if you have very young children it can can help you to uh, you know find out what's the best education for them uh, at the same time what's the best school for them you have that liberty you have those options which you wouldn't have had if you weren't looking for a second source of income so what are the things that you should look out and uh, what are the and and recognize the signs of change feeling stuck or plateaued in your career can indicate it's time for a change this is where opportunities offer for you to have that second income which is quite regular all right so therefore uh, by embracing the potential rewards of equity during the 30s you can actually break free from career stagnation and open doors to financial growth and success so therefore it is very important to find the perfect timing for pursuing equity which is crucial for maximizing your chances of success your ability to be more confident your ability to take chances your ability to take risks your actual ability for you to upskill yourself are all there if on, on the on the parallel side you are actually uh, growing your second source of income <clears throat> now now what happens uh, let's break it down further and let us look at uh, what are the risk appetite and flexibility which you can actually take uh, during your 30s at that time you have a generally higher uh, risk appetite and in than in later st stages which is pretty obvious this means that uh, you may be more open in in investing in such with higher growth potential such as stocks real estate or business ventures as well all right please do remember there are a whole lot of people who actually can be part of crowd funding for uh, startups and you may not get you may get say around uh, 100 shares 200 shares in a startup but then you have uh, you you can you uh, you know you have that satisfaction of having invested in a stock in a, in a, in a startup and then uh, see how it grows it's a huge learning experience for you as well and there are startup founders who are always looking for crowd funding <clears throat> so 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 it's also important that you build a diverse investment portfolio investing in your 30s allows you to build uh, something like that diversification is very very crucial for managing risks and maximizing the returns you can allocate uh, your investments across various asset classes such as stocks bonds real estate and mutual funds spreading your risks and increasing the likelihood of generating consistent income streams right and therefore you can also set your long term financial goals your 30s are ideal for setting and working towards long term financial goals whether it's savings for retirement buying a home starting a business or funding your children's education or investing which which which, which will allow you to uh, actually reach these milestones in a in a in a far better manner without any downsides building a second uh, income can actually uh, help you to accelerate your progress towards these goals in secure your financial future building expertise and network uh, investing in your 30s gives you uh, an opportunity to develop expertise and in investment strategies and financial markets you can educate yourself about different investment vehicles learn from professionals and expand your network uh, in the financial industry this knowledge and network can further enhance your ability to make informed uh, investment decisions and identify lucrative opportunities for uh, wealth creation and then more than anything else tax tax benefit and that 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 you need to have a razor sharp eye on that depending on your uh, state taxes obviously uh, central taxes when it comes to uh, income tax investing in certain financial instruments such as retirement accounts uh, or tax efficient investment vehicles can provide tax advantages your ability to maneuver all this is uh, gets highlighted during your early 30s so this these these benefits can actually help you uh, to optimize your tax liability allowing you to retain a large portion of your investment returns and maximize your wealth at the same time what's also important to know is that um, you get to know how much you know you can actually go ahead and invest is it 5000 10000 20000 25000 whatever it is 
you you do come up with uh, a certain amount of money which you can add at a later stage over a period of time <clears throat> at the same time please do remember uh, that investing always carries risks and it's crucial that you conduct your own research don't depend on anyone else seek professional advice if needed and diversify your investments having a well defined financial plan which are aligned with your goals and risk tolerance is essential for making informed investment decisions and maximizing your uh, wealth building potential now i'm we are going to take a simple example and then explain it to you uh, how much of wealth you can actually generate and and it gives you a very good idea about it assuming you start investing in your early 30s maybe at the age of 30 itself a sum of around 10000 per month and that you decide that I, that you are going to invest 10000 rupees for the next 20 years so let us now look at two scenarios how much of wealth can you generate by investing in say a mutual fund which is which which is to a large large extent safe and regulated by the industry leaders and uh, uh, by um, government bodies as well now assuming that you know the thumb rule is that if you are 30 years of age uh, you can take a risk of uh, investing in equity which carries more risks but 70% of say around 10000 can be invested in equity uh and 30% can be uh, can be invested in debt right uh, in in proper uh, government uh, bonds and stuff like that and uh, and then the 70 30% can can actually go ahead you can actually pick up stocks uh, of uh, certain companies which um you know which which are there in the stock market which which acts actually are members of the stock market and um and uh, so the thumb rule is if you are 30 70% equity 30% debt if you are 40 60% uh, equity uh, 40% debt and that's how it goes right now let us now look at the kind of uh, assumptions that we can actually make assuming there's a uh, you get an average annual return of say 12% for equity funds and 8% for debt funds and this is quite regular this is not something which which is uh, very high you know we are not we are we are not looking at more than 12% we are not looking at uh, you know more than 8% as far as uh, equity and debt, equity and debt is concerned and therefore um, let us look at the equity allocation of say 70% for 10000 rupees which is 7000 per month at an annual investment of rupees 7000 multiplied by 12% which are uh, 12 months and you get around 84000 rupees so on an annual basis um 70% of your equity which which means 84000 is what you will end up investing on a yearly basis now debt is around 30% and 10000 of uh, 30% will be around uh, 3000 rupees will be 3000 rupees and uh, if you multiply it by 12 months you will get 36000 so you are going to invest 84000 plus 36000 rupees now let us look at the calculation here all right <clears throat> the future value can be calculated using a compound interest calculator assuming an annual return of 12% and a monthly investment of 7000 over 20 years as far as equity is concerned the formula for calculating future value is something that we are going to discuss here but then uh, we are got, going to come down to uh, the actual numbers right now let us look at 84000 rupees per year for the next 12 years and uh, at 12% interest rate how much of money can you can generate over a period of 20 years in a mutual fund right it it is it will be around 50 lakh 63904 rupees now come let's come to the debt calculation um we are assuming an annual return of say 8% and a monthly investment of rupees 3000 over the next 20 years right so which means that 36000 rupees per year for the next 20 years at 8% rate of interest it will generate around 
233 rupees. The total wealth generated, that is equity plus debt, will be 50 lakhs 63,000 plus 19 lakhs 78,000 will generate a wealth of 70 lakhs 42,000. Right? So, therefore, by investing 10,000 rupees and being very disciplined about it, you will generate 70 lakhs 42,138. Right? Now, you, you have an enormous amount of benefit that 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 you lend up i'm sure that you're not just going to uh, invest only 10000 rupees you have your provident fund you have your um, uh, you know gratuity fund that will come into play as well so assuming we collect all that you'll be sitting on a wealth of around 1 crore rupees uh, or slightly more and if assuming that you put it in a fixed deposit at around say as less as seven 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 uh, percent you'll you'll end up with around seven lakh rupees on an annual basis which is an extra income to you and as you go along your your upskilling your ability to actually um, um, go to better jobs better salaries um, you know is something that that and if you keep doing more of these kind of activities when it comes to your wealth generation. Um, on, a, on a very normal basis, uh, <clears throat> you can actually generate much more wealth. And assuming at the age of 50, uh, there is a chance of being, uh, being uh, letting you go from a, from a certain job, you still have a, a very honorable uh, kind of money that will come to you on a monthly basis. Which, which can you utilize to do everything else, which could, or assuming that, that you decided that I'm not going to work any longer at, from the age of 50, I'm going to pursue my passion or I'm going to, go to become a consultant, I'm going to do other things, you still have that amount of money just by saving 10,000 rupees from the age of 30, which in the normal course, you could have actually used for going going on a or going for a for a holiday or taking your friends for for lunch and for the next one or two weeks and and you just lose your 10000 rupees that, uh, that way you might have uh, that kind of enjoyment but but if you look at it on a longer basis 20 years please remember that you you would have generated for yourself a sum of rupees 70 lakhs 42,000. We are going to leave you with these thoughts and I hope uh, you will actually start considering the amount of gen uh, wealth that you can generate by just investing 10,000 rupees per month. Thank you very much and hope to see you soon. Bye. Subscribe to the Federal's YouTube page for more news and updates.